Yeah, I did some of the first music video, Christian music videos that were done right. on the gospel, which is pretty cool. From the Building of Faith, welcome to Celebration, a Christian talk and variety show with outreaches across the world via television, radio, internet, and social media. You'll hear from today's leading authors, preachers, singers, evangelists, songwriters, and local Christian leaders. Now here's your host, president and founder of Journey Network, Dr. J.T. Guyton. Uh, yes, I think it was three. We did uh, we did one called the Gunslinger, and then Covenant Rider, and then the Treasure of Eagle Mountain. That was a shorter one, but the first two were they were our uh, I say attempt at a full blown movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were all awesome. yeah. And yeah. then there was the transition from Gospel Bill to Bill Gunner. Yeah, and yeah. then the we whole... started. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just, just going to say the whole tone changed, kind of. Yeah, it, we were uh, we we started doing out, more outdoor mm -hmm. uh, shows, which the Gospel Bill show in the in the uh, the early shows we would it would take us about a day to do an entire show mm -hmm. to shoot it, and then the editing uh, happened. But when we started doing the location things, we shot a lot of those out at uh, Willie George's Camp Dragons USA. And we would spend sometimes a week or more on those. So, so the production expanded. Uh, we, you know, we were riding horses outdoors. Uh, I think we got to be little boys. We got to be cowboys again. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, great shows. You guys really, you, you set the tone for other programs like Bible Man and so many others that come along after that. Uh, but let me ask you this question, and I guess this is maybe a good transition question if we can, but where did all those shows go? Because when I, when I look today, I don't really see anything modern from the Christian world like that to reach kids on a Saturday morning. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree with you. There's not a lot out there for kids on network TV. I do think, you know, uh, I think one of the reasons God blessed us is we were always local church people. Yeah. Uh, and I say that to say whenever we traveled, we went to churches. Uh, the curriculum Willie George wrote, and well, and we all wrote different editions to that. We're, we were all a part of it. Um, that was for the local church. Mm -hmm. And I do think God used us to teach a lot. One of the things we did back in those days when we would travel, we did teachers conferences and we taught teachers how to do children's church and make it exciting, make it relevant, preach the word to little kids. And I think God's idea was for that to be the major place that people, pardon me, my phone Your just phone. went off. That's all right. <laughs> I think God does. Uh, he really wants a church. Parents bringing their kids to church, children's church, mm -hmm. to be the major place of teaching. I think we can be uh, kids. Can, you can learn something. You can learn from the gospel. This show, of course, but I think God's highest and best is for churches to have a great kids program. Uh, you know, when Willie George started his church, Church on the Move in Tulsa, mm -hmm. we really invested a lot in our children's ministry. Sure. And uh, my son was growing up during this time. Okay, now. We live in Oklahoma City. My son planted a church here eight years ago, uh, and he worked in kids' ministry because that was in his DNA, I think. Sure, sure. And now in his church, children's ministry has a – it's not just babysitting. In yeah. some churches, it still is. It's like a little thing we do to kind of take care of the kids. No, it should be ministry to these kids where we're somebody's teaching them Amen. and doing it well, and they're worshiping the Lord getting saved and they're getting filled with spirit uh, is, is kind of cool. A couple of years ago on, on Pentecost Sunday, our kids ministry taught uh, from ages six to 12 on what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And Pentecost Sunday, Pentecost means 50. It was 50 days after the resurrection. 
when Jesus, when the Holy Spirit was poured out. So we taught on that day and we prayed that morning and we had 50 little kids and all of our services be filled with the Holy Spirit that day, Praise which was pretty cool. They were yes. praying in their prayer language. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So I, I said all that to say, I think the local church is really God's highest and best yeah. for children's ministry to happen. Absolutely. And, and I love yeah. how, what you said, because when I was a pastor for 25 years, that was something that I was always trying to get through to all teachers from the nursery on up. You know, these kids are never too young. The toddler's class, they're not too young that you don't start getting the word in them so that the word can be coming out of them because they, do, they do listen. And that needs to be ministry time for them. Do you, do you have a certain, I guess with being in children's ministry all, you, all these years, and I've had people before uh, who've had this conversation and some have debated different things, but when do you think is a good time that they move out of children's church into big church? Uh, you know, in our, in our ministry, I think this is, there's a natural progression there. Mm -hmm. Uh, w one thing we, we endeavor to do is from the time they're in the nursery, we want to minister to these little kids. Right. Uh, whenever you're in the nursery at our church, I mean, you are a baby, you're sitting in a, one of these little chairs. Our teachers come around to all these babies and, and they're caring for them, of course, physically, but we have little Bibles. And if you open up the, open the Bible up, there's a, stick on picture of Jesus in the Bible. And even as they're infants, we take the little Bible, we come to these little kids and we say, this is God's word. This is the, the Bible. And we'll take, I'm using my phone. We'll love on the Bible. And then the teacher will give it to the, to the baby to hug. Yeah. And then we'll open the, the uh, page and there's a picture of Jesus. And we'll say, this is God's word. Jesus is in the Bible and we love Jesus. And then they'll hug their Bible. And that is their lesson every week. Wow. We do that every week, week after week. Just to, we're introducing even a, a little baby uh, to the Lord, to, to Jesus. And then as they get older, twos and threes, uh, fours and five, we have breakdowns on those classes. Yeah. We begin to teach a little bit more. Mm -hmm. When they're from the first to the third grade, we have a breakdown there. We, uh, we'll, we'll get a little stronger in our teaching. When they're from nine to 12, we call that at our church, we call that uh, threshold. They're on the threshold of, going, of being a teenager. And we, we have a, uh, services a little bit more like big church. So by the time they're 12, coming out of the eighth grade, going into the ninth grade is, is our time. That's whenever they're welcomed into church. And our goal is to prepare them with the gospel through all those different ages. So that when they walk into church, they're, they kind of know what's going on because of the way they've been taught through the different stages of their life. Sure. Teaching the Word to children is so important. Uh, as as uh, most people watching would agree, um, and I don't think it's ever too early to get that, get that Word in them, like you're saying, from the very nursery right on. But a lot of parents today, they think that it's the church's responsibility to teach their children the Word. And then when the kids misbehave at school, they want to blame it on the school. But yeah. doesn't that responsibility come back to mom and dad? Yeah. Yeah, that's the first line <laughs> of, of, of defense with our family. It's mom and dad should be doing their job. Yeah. And Scripture says a lot about this. It said, uh, you know, one Scripture that, that I, I've taught on for years is train up a child in the way he should go. That's just talking to parents. Uh, this is not talking to the church. Now the church helps. Right. And we talk about this to the parents in our church from time to time. We love your kids. We want to make a place where we can minister to them, but these are not our kids. These are your kids. And we only get them for an hour and a half every week. Now you take the things that we're teaching them and you elaborate on them as a parent because it's your job to teach your children, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. So that's the parents. And training is not just a one-time, you know, take them to church. It's something we integrate into our everyday life, serving our kids, uh, serving the Lord in our families. Right. Well, we yeah. don't, uh, when someone's training a dog to sit, they don't just tell them one time to sit. No. It's a repetitive no thing over and over and over. 
so, repetitive. It's like, you know, you teach your child to brush your teeth, okay? So put some <laughs> right. toothpaste on the brush and brush your teeth. Yeah. And so that's what you do, okay? And then you come to them again. Okay, did you brush your teeth? No, I didn't brush my teeth. Or they even will try to fake you out because yeah. they don't want to brush your teeth. Yeah. And they'll even they'll even figure out I can go get the toothbrush wet. Did you brush your teeth? Because mom and dad are going to check the toothbrush, and if it's wet, yeah. they'll think I brush my teeth. Because <laughs> they don't get yeah. your teeth will rot out of your head. They right. don't get that concept. <laughs> to them, it's just, and so training means you keep going back and you keep going back over and yeah. over, That's right. over and over, and then there comes a day the light comes on and they go, oh yeah, I do this to preserve my teeth. The same thing with your spirit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I believe parents should, can take the responsibility to get their kids saved themselves. Yes. yes. You don't have to wait for the church to do that. That's right. Uh, and you can also pray with your children to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And some parents say, I don't know how to do that. You need to learn how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because that's a part of getting people saved, even sure. filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. Is a part of being responsible to make disciples. That's what Jesus told us all to do. Yeah, that's right. I wonder if if many of them feel that they can't do it because maybe they themselves have not truly experienced uh, yeah, that yeah, feeling. Right. So they're they're uh, they've got that issue there. One of the big things I think today we we see this and we hear this a lot uh, on television, social media, and that is uh, they're too hard on their children, or they're not hard enough on their children, and. Uh, they, they don't discipline their child the right way. They're, back to that balance thing again, where is the balance, do you feel, with, with uh, discipline for children? Okay, JT, you just opened up a can of worms. You ready for this? I'm ready. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, training, it, it's not all just about spanking them. Okay, I'm going to talk about spanking for a minute because that's very controversial. Right. Anytime I about this in churches now, uh, I pretty much always get some pushback. Sure. And people will come up to me and say, I just don't believe in that. I don't believe in spanking. Yeah. And okay, all right. Uh, so where do we go to find out about this? Well, it's in the Word of God. And, uh, and here's the bottom line. Spanking is not beating on a child. Spanking can be done uh, abusively. Yes, it can be, and many times is. And that's not right. That's not what we're talking about. Right. It can be done too often. It can be done too little. It, it, it has to be done very responsibly. But when it's done properly, the idea of spank, spanking, which is corporal punishment, when it's done right, actually will bring you closer to your child as you go through the process of it. Because one of the things you never do if you're going to spank a child is do it in anger. You don't you don't spank them because they've just done this 25 times and you're fed up and you just blow up and then you go grab them and wail away on them. That is totally the wrong concept about spanking. Right. Let, let's just talk about a couple of things about spanking is discipline when done properly. You tell your child, okay, I don't want you to do this or I want you to do that, positive or negative. Well, then in the training process, you say, okay, uh, if you do that again, because if they continue to do this, then... We're going to have to do a spanking. All right. Now, so then they do it again. That's important that you keep your word. But now that you're going to spank them, once again, the Bible says the rod of your anger will fail. Mm -hmm. So you just don't get mad and spank them. You have to, in fact, if, you, if they make you angry, and children can make you angry because of the things that they do sometimes. Right. What you need to do is pull back, wait a minute, pray, cool down. I know a pastor that... Uh, told this story. He had, uh, I think he had six kids and, uh, so, so one of them would do something and he knew the scripture. They needed the spanking and I'm going to spank them, but I know the rod of my anger would fail. So he would calm down and the way he would calm down was to play the piano. Okay. And so he would go in and begin to play the piano. But here's the deal. When, when dad's playing the piano, the kids are going, uh Oh, somebody's about to get it. Because God's dad's playing the piano, <laughs> so it, that's that's the thing. And and I, and I nearly am hesitant to even talk about this because of the steps it takes sure. is an elaborate walkthrough. Yeah. Uh, whenever they have, whenever you make the decision to do that, you need to make sure that they know why you're spanking them. Mm -hmm. 
And then when you do spank them, you don't use your hand because your hand is designed to love your children. Right. You want to use some kind of an implement. The Bible said the rod and correction is what brings uh, is what brings them back to the Lord. So you want to use some kind of a stick, but it doesn't need to be a two by four for a three year old. Right. It needs to be commens- commensurate with their size. We need when you spank them, you don't hit them in the face, you don't hit them in the back, you bend them over and you hit them on their little bottom. That's padded. It's designed for that. God knew that when he gave them to us. And then after you've spanked them, gone through that process, then it's very important if they cry, and they will probably, that you let them do that and then bring them back and say, now, do you know why I did that? Uh, I'm your dad. I'm not doing that because I I hate you. I did this because I love you. And because this will get you in trouble if you continue to do this. And I want you to know I care about you. And uh, are we okay now? And make sure that your fellowship that's been broken over the spanking is now restored. Right. And you hug them and you, and you love them. And it, once again, I, and I didn't do this service because our, we, my wife and I wrote a book called Devil Proof Your Family. Mm. It's available on our website, kimbluntministries.com. And we go through the process of spanking. I think there's a dozen, 12 steps in it. Yeah. They take you through from the beginning to the end on how to sure. biblically spank a child. And I, I, I'll just say this about this. Uh, like in Canada, for instance, it is against the law to spank your child. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it, they can, you can go to, to jail for that. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful the way you do this in our culture, in particular sure. in different you know countries that we live in. But done properly. God's design is to bring your, to train your child to bring you as a parent closer to him. Yeah. You know, he's a God of order. And I'm glad you brought this up the way you did it because there are steps. There is a right way and a wrong way to discipline child, but, uh, or a child. But we live in a society today where uh, everybody feels uh, they're entitled to everything. And I personally feel that part of that feeling of entitlement comes because We've done away with punishment. You don't have to pay the price for the crime anymore, if you will. You can just live free and do whatever, but that's not what the Bible teaches. And what you're you're saying here today, there is a right way to do that, and that is to let them know that you are punished because you're loved. The Bible says God chastises those that he loves. Yes, yes. You know, that's, that is, that's so true. He does. And they learn that as a child, they learn that, that there are boundaries that if they get outside, yeah. I'm going to get hurt. Yeah. And you're right. Our culture is not teaching it like, like yeah. they should. And that's why so many people are getting so hurt. So many broken people, mm-hmm. you know, in our church and every church, the times in which we're living are the most broken, hurt people that you can ever imagine. Mm-hmm. And they need healing. They need help. And uh, that's what the church is designed to be. But it is, we're living in some challenging times right now. We but really God is big enough. His grace is bigger than anything that's going on. And I believe he's got a plan for us. I want to ask you one more question on children. And then I want to dive into some marriage issues if we have a moment or two here for that. If, if a parent has a child and that child is hanging with the wrong people, uh, uh, going with the wrong crowd, doing the wrong things. What, what is the best thing for a parent to do to help their children to see? Because I know m- my mom always said, the more, the more I tell you no, the more you're going to want to do it. And I have found that to be true in so many things. You know, the more you keep on at somebody, the more they want to do it. Where is the level in all of that? And what's the best way to deal with a situation like that? Well, I think, I think what we've, we've got in our, our culture is parents are not watching over their kids. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing you have to understand. If they're living in your home, mm-hmm. you, first of all, are called by God to be a godly parent to them. Yeah. You are the image of God in, a, in the life of a child. And, uh, and so as the parent of, the, of their home, you have to understand they're in your home. You are paying the bills. You're taking care of things, yeah. and they're responsible to do 
what you tell them to do. Now, ideally, you start this when they're young, because if, as they get older, if this hasn't been implemented in their thinking, and like they're 13 years old, and now you just come down on them real hard, you're going to have some problems because you didn't do this incrementally through the ages of life. Right. But, you know, like, like when my kids were growing up, I've got two kids, and there would be times they would do something because kids do. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. They're going to do crazy things. Right. They're going to disobey. They're going to do something. And so we've had sit-downs. with. Well, I've had this with both my kids and say, listen, we love you. We, we provide this home for you. We, we have, you have a room, uh, but this is our house, and there's going to be some rules because we serve God. We love Jesus. We're not perfect, but we're trying to do the best we can, mm-hmm. and we want a godly home. There's some things we, you can't bring into this home. There's some things, and I've told my, both my kids before. Now, if you just can't stand the rules around this house, then there's the door right over there, mm-hmm. and, and you can leave, and that sounds pretty tough for a four-year-old, but listen, sometimes I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. (laughs) But I told my kids this when they were little now, because here's the thing, you know, for the Jews, the Jewish people, they have a bar mitzvah when a child, when a young man is 13 years old, Yeah. when a young lady's 13. And it's like a graduation place that now they become bar mitzvah actually means a son of the law or They've, had, they've been trained to the point, ideally, in a Jewish family, the Word of God, the covenant has been taught to them, and now they begin to understand on a different way. And I think this is true. I think when you, when you get to be about a teenager, it varies, yeah. that children get a new awareness. I'm, I'm watching this right now, my 15-year-old grandson, and how his thinking is so changing. And so ideally, we put that in when they're young, because if we wait until they're 15, yeah. We're going to have a tough time catching up. And that's a lot of what's going on in our culture. Parents are letting their kids go. They're not monitoring what's going on in their life. They're not monitoring their devices. The iPhone that came along in 2007 changed everything. Yes. Now, kids have phones. And I'm not saying your kids can't have a phone, but you as a parent need to know what's going on on that phone. Mm. Uh, I recommend parents take their children's iPhone, collect them at night when they go to bed and give them back in the morning. Uh, There are different different programs you can put on these phones to protect kids from pornography, covenant eyes, and there's all sorts of great things. And then you need to be able to to look at the history of their phone. Uh, And they need to be accountable as long as they're living in your home. And I've done this before as a parent. I've gone in their room when they weren't there and checked it out. And looked under the mattress yes, and see, saw what was in their closet. Uh, I, I was amazed when I heard about years ago at the Columbine shooting, that terrible uh, shooting in Colorado when all those kids were killed. And there have been many other school shootings. But the parents didn't know that in these kids' rooms, they were worshiping Satan and all this stuff's going on because they never checked them out. That's right. So it's important, the scripture says, to, to know this. Uh, speaking to the shepherd, know the state of your flock. Know what's going on with your kids. Right. Check them out because it's so easy for them to, be, to begin to veer. And I think sometimes parents get intimidated by their kids mm-hmm. as they're growing up. And they, they're they afraid even to yeah. to be in their life. And no, we are responsible for parenting, parenting our kids in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor uh, Gabe Swaggart was just on the program a few weeks ago. And it's it's so similar to what you were just saying, he had discussed the same thing about his children, that every night there's a certain time that their cell phones have to be placed in his and his wife's bedroom and they stay there to the next morning. And he Mm -hmm. said, we're well aware of what's going on and we can check, uh, you know, uh, of course he said his... He doesn't allow his children to have social media, but he said we are aware of everything, every text message and stuff that comes in. And so that's so, so true because parents need to know, and you're right, if they live under your roof, you pay the bills. You you have a godly right, but you also have the right if they're living on your place. Yeah, you know, you you have to inspect too. You can't, kids don't do what you expect. Mm -hmm. They do what you inspect. (laughs) True, true. So, yeah important that we we stay connected with our kids uh yeah my uh my father's name was johnny 
And so dad told us when we were kids, he said, you, you don't live in the United States of America. You live in a very special place. He said, you live in something that is separate from the United States. And those rules don't apply here. You live in a place called Johnny Land. <laughs> and in Johnny Land, this is how we do it according to the Bible. And this is the way it's going to be. So, you know, we, we knew if we wanted to keep that roof over our head, we needed to abide by those rules like you're teaching us here today. So it, yeah. it, it kind of flows through. You know, I think what gen one generation is taught will come into the next if they stick with that and don't buy into all the modern trends that say you can't discipline your child or right. your child deserves their privacy, you shouldn't go through their right. phone or any other lie that the devil in the world yeah. tells them today. Yeah, absolutely. We live in crazy, crazy times. Yeah. Very disjointed times. Right. You're exactly uh, right. Ideas out there. Yeah. yeah. And I think your children, no matter how old they are, even once they become... Um, I, I don't have children personally, but uh, I have a nephew and two nieces. And I was just telling my sister the other day, I said, you know, I enjoyed when they were kids and, uh, and, and I got to help raise them a little bit and, and instill things in them. And of course, they're, they're all in the ministry today in some Ugh. form or fashion. I said, but I really like this stage we're in now because they're all in their early 20s in college. I said where yeah. the, the discipline thing doesn't really have to jump in there any much or much yeah. anymore because it was put in them when they were young. And so, yeah, you know, when it, and when it comes to spanking, there's a time as they get to be older teenagers, sure. you should, you probably don't need to do that anymore yeah. Yeah. because if you've done it properly, right? if you do properly, you, you hardly ever have to spank. Yeah, absolutely. Normally, happens when they're, they're you're younger and they're, they're children in training yeah you're exactly right uh with my dad it just took one that was all yeah and you got right. you tell me uh -huh. one more time the name of the book they can go to your website kenbluntministries.com and the name of the book yes. it's called devil proof your family okay devil proof your family half of the book is on uh, marriage okay and half of the book is raising kids now, we tell a lot of stories about things that we did training our children and there is a, a whole chapter on what spanking is and what it's not and the abuse of it and, but but how to properly do that I, I, I really we are so glad you have been with us for this program our prayer is that today's show has been a blessing and an encouragement to you and your walk with the lord this ministry is continually reaching out to spread the good news of jesus christ to all the world we need your love gifts and prayers to help keep this ministry on the air 24 hours a day. So call us at 1-833-963-5433 or write us at Journey Network, PO Box 1420, Atmore, Alabama 36504 or you can contact us online at journeynetwork.live. If you would like to have JT come speak to your church, conference, or event, please visit our website and go to the event scheduling tab. Thank you for your continued support. And remember, God loves you and we do too.